Hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing and today I'm gonna to go through five things you should never do when you are valuing a company. Hey there, before we dive into today's video, I wanted to take a minute to remind you that as a big thank you for hitting 250,000 subscribers on my channel recently, I'm hosting a huge giveaway and it's happening right now. To find out how you can win $1,500 cash and other great prizes, just check out the description after this video and click the link for my 250,000 YouTube subscriber giveaway, woo! Now back to the video. When you're searching for companies to invest in, there's a lot of resources, basically endless number of resources that'll tell you what you need to do to make sure you're buying the right stocks and taking the least risk and everybody's got all that good stuff. But one of the main principles of rule one investing is sticking to what you know, what Warren Buffett calls staying within your circle of competence. So here are five things I see people do all the time when they're valuing companies, when they're trying to figure out what's this business worth that I'm about to buy, right? Or what's this business worth that I'm about to sell? Now, what are they doing that causes more heartaches than you need to have? Okay, so let's get started. First, don't listen to anyone who's telling you to buy a stock. Tips from friends, brokers, I mean, you name it. Tips, unfortunately, are not the way Rule One investors choose companies nor are they the way really successful investors pick the businesses they invest in. As Charlie Munger once said, we, it means Warren Buffett and Charlie, recognize early on that very smart people do very dumb things. Okay? And if he's saying that, come on, he's talking about Wall Street. Uh, what about your, you know, your nephew, your brother-in-law? The most important thing for you to remember about investing is that this is absolutely true when it comes to the stock market. Absolutely true, so don't forget it. I mean, don't even listen to me. I don't want you guys thinking, oh, Phil said it, so it's gotta be true. What I mean is that you'll never hear me give you specific advice about stocks to buy, because the whole point of a rule one education is for you to figure it out yourself. So things change all the time, and if you're not keeping up with the research and the activities of a specific company, man, no tip is gonna help you. I mean, even if they were right at the time, right? I harp on this all the time because I've seen lots and lots of smart people lose really serious money in the stock market and they did it by following the advice of somebody else, like their stock advisors or financial news headlines or newsletters, you know, special reports you can buy, stuff like that. And sometimes it seems like the whole world has an opinion on what you should do with your money. Absolutely they do because they're getting paid to do that, but don't listen to them. Always do your own independent research to find out if you like the company and if you understand it. You gotta stop listening to people and do your own due diligence. And you're gonna be far more confident and more successful with the entire process. Okay, second thing. Don't invest in a company that isn't showing consistent growth. One of the most important qualities you're looking for when you're investing is consistency over time. It's kind of why we stay away from initial public offerings. You just don't have the history. So if a company isn't consistently growing, then it probably isn't one that you should be investing in, at least right now. Because why? We're looking way down the road. We want to kind of feel like, yeah, this business, I may not know everything about its future, but it's likely to be a lot bigger down the road in 10 years. So what we're looking for is businesses with a consistent growth rate. We like to see about 10% per year for the best results. Doesn't have to be that high, but it has to be consistent. Dive deep into every aspect of these companies' financials. I want you to look at the return on invested capital, return on equity, I want the sales growth rate, earnings growth rate, equity growth rate, cash growth rate. Those few numbers right there are gonna tell you pretty quickly whether or not you're on the right track. Now, speaking of all these numbers and calculations, I've got a set of free financial calculators that can do all of this stuff for you. So just click the link on the screen to get them and you can use them right now. Third, don't ignore a company's debt. Most companies have some debt, but to determine whether or not a company's debt is reasonable, what I want you to do is find out 
if they can pay off that debt, and it's gonna be what's called long-term debt, within three years or less out of their earnings. Now, to do this, just divide the long-term debt number, which is on the balance sheet, by the current free cash flow. That's better than earnings, actually. So just do it by the free cash flow. That's gonna tell you that the company's kind of keeping its debt under control. And by the way, be very leery of debt that's rising in a company. Debt can kill you like nothing else can in not only your own personal financials, but also with the corporate financials. All right, this is similar to a friend that racks up credit card bills to have the newest iPhone or they're booking a fancy cruise, um, but they're behind on their mortgage. So bad companies get like that and they spend money on stupid stuff they think they need right now. And I tell you, a lot of times it's just going out there and buying some other companies so the CEO can get a bigger jet. And I'm not kidding. Now, fourth, make sure you never buy a company that doesn't have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. You can't just go buy stuff because they sell things cheap or they're growing fast. I mean, I can't tell you how many companies are here today, gone tomorrow, all right? It takes a special company to be worth putting our money into that we can count on having it when we're retired. And that special company, if it's worth investing in, it has to have something called a moat. It has to have something truly special that protects the castle, right? Something's really awesome that protects it from similar companies. And what that does was give you and me the confidence that this thing's gonna be able to go through the ups and downs of real life, right? The, the events of life. And it'll be around a solid company in 10 years. So this is really critical. It doesn't matter what kind of moat. I mean, you just gotta have one. Brand recognition is a huge moat like Apple or Coke. Um, secrets, both of those companies also have secret modes, so does 3M. Um, a switching mode is something that Apple has with its ecosystem, makes it hard to move off of, you know, a Mac and, and move over to other kind of companies. So you just look for what is this intrinsic built into it, like railroad tracks in a railroad company, mode that the company has to have and never invest in companies where you can't identify this really, really durable competitive advantage. That's the critical thing. If your company doesn't have the ability to stand out and stay solid in the marketplace, it's a pretty good indication that the next few years, something probably is gonna happen to it that's gonna wreck your investment, all right? Okay, finally, number five is the most important don't of them all. Do not pay retail prices for the companies that you buy. You guys, this is the biggest mistake most investors make, and it's why so many academics just think you should just go put your money in an index and just get the market return because, you know what, if you go out and buy 15, 20 companies in a lifetime and you pay retail for them all, you pay whatever the market price is, chances are that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna get the market rate of return. You wasted all that time, you might as well just go buy an index. You must, and this is the huge secret from Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, You gotta buy things on sale, you guys. You gotta have what's called a margin of safety. 80 years ago, when Ben Graham started this sort of, the rule, ruler family, if you will, like uh, our strategic way of investing got started back in the depression. And Ben Graham said the three most important words of investing are margin of safety. And the reason for that is we're human. We, we're going to miss out on some facts about the company or we're going to misunderstand some of the future. And without a margin of safety, we could lose money. And our goal as a rule one investor is never lose money. We want to never have our uh, dollars that we've saved so hard in our life to get go down in some kind of permanent way. And that will happen only if you're out there paying full price. If you pay margin of safety prices, you've got such a fantastic cushion to make mistakes within that even if you make them, you'll probably still come out okay. Manesh Pabrai, one of my favorite, favorite investors, says it's like getting a free lottery ticket. If you buy this stuff on sale, it's like the upside could be huge, right? A bazillion dollars, but there's no downside. You can't lose money. That's margin of safety right there. So. Remember, never buy a company at retail, only invest when you have a fully wonderful business. It's got tangible competitive advantages. It's definitely a company that's run by good people and it is on sale. 
And by the way, our first one, don't rely on tips from your brother-in-law. So just go out and get these critical questions answered. And I'm going to tell you the right move is going to happen for you at the right time. It's going to just reveal itself if you're patient and make no mistake. That's what most great investors absolutely insist on in their practice. Now, what I'd love to hear from you guys is this. Have you ever invested in a company that somebody recommended to you? And how did that work out? So leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching you guys. Now go play. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and feel it was useful in teaching you more about how to not buy companies, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. It's awesome. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. And thanks again for watching.